Lynn Bosch. She did extremely well academically. She got her bachelor's degree and she began working on a master's degree in statistics. Now, while she was at the university, in November of 2004, she met a young man named Fred Vandeviver. He was also studying a similar subject as her in the university.
nice dress that she had. It was a sundress with spaghetti straps and Fred said to her, I don't want you to ever wear that dress in front of anyone other than me. And her mother kind of laughed it off, but she felt pretty uncomfortable that he said that. And when Inga and Fred left to go back to their respective homes, Inga's mom said to Fred, take good care of her. She's all we've got. That was something that she always said, you know, kind of jokingly, endearingly, you know. Now, on March 15th, Fred slept over at Inga's apartment, and something went on between he and his brother, some kind of argument or bad situation, and he was in a bit of a mood about it. The next morning, when they woke up, he was still acting kind of grumpy, and Inga wasn't quite sure why he was grumpy. She questioned him, asking if he was angry with her, and he said he was just upset about his brother, but they continued to talk about their relationship that morning. She was saying to him she didn't think he really loved her anymore, and he told her he felt the same way, that she didn't love him. And he asked her to put her feelings down on an email and send it to him, and he would read it later because he had to go, and she agreed. So Fred left that morning. And he went to the university for class. Meanwhile, she stayed at home and she wrote him a handwritten letter, not an email. Then, some construction workers stopped by her place. And they said they were there to fix the broken tiles on her balcony. You see, when she moved in, she had a couch that would not fit through the door. So they had moved it in over the balcony and had damaged some tile. So these men were there to repair it. But she said, I'm going out right now. Can you come back later? And they agreed. So at about 10 a.m., she headed over to the campus. She handed Fred the note, but she didn't stay for him to read it. He left campus and went to a furniture store at around 11 to pick up something for a friend, because he had a truck. Meanwhile, Inga left campus with a very good friend of hers named Vimpy. It was a male friend that she knew since childhood. And they went and they had some lunch. She told him about her troubles with Fred. She said they had a serious fight and she was afraid that the relationship might be over. Now, at one o'clock that day, Inga received a text message from Fred, and here is what it said. Hey, I'm glad your lecture went well, and I hope it was nice catching up with Vimpy, too. Over lunch, I read your letter. Thank you very much. I will look at it again tonight when I have more time. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great afternoon, too. Love you, my angel. F, as in Fred, XX. So, at 1.15, she got back to her apartment, and the contractors were there. She let them in. They did their work. She phoned her mother, and her mother heard when she let the contractors out. You know, her mother could hear through the phone that the contractors were leaving, and 
that they sent for analysis. And then they tried to figure out what could have possibly happened here. They figured it had to be someone who knew her. Because she looked so relaxed, you know, so to speak, just sitting there watching her movie, reading her magazine, um, wearing her pajama shorts. So they think she let somebody in and... They totally caught her off guard, and the fact that she had 47 wounds also made it seem personal. So because of that, they never interviewed any of the construction staff at all. They felt for sure it was not them. Another thing to note is that during that day, the electricity had been out for a few hours while construction workers were doing some particular work. So it is possible that someone got in to the, through the gate while the electricity was out. So it's another thing to keep in mind. So two weeks later, they thought the case was closed because a 17-year-old drug dealer confessed to the crime, but shortly after he changed his story and he said, no, I didn't do it. I saw who did it though. It wasn't me, but I saw who did it. But then the things that he was saying showed that he didn't even know anything about this crime. I mean, he knew that she was on a couch, and that was what kind of made them feel like he did know in the beginning. Because the couch part of the story was not out there. But, it turned out, he didn't know what day of the week it happened. And he didn't know which apartment was even hers. So, that was not their guy. So the only person who they could really come up with was Fred, her boyfriend. So he was charged with her murder. And he spent nine months on trial. Now, in South Africa, they don't have jury trials. They just have a judge who hears everything and the judge decides. So now, here's what they were looking at. The fingerprint on the DVD was said to be Fred's. They said that they found some shoes in his apartment that had recently been cleaned and they matched the mark of blood on the bathroom floor. They said that his alibi of having been at his job was not tight enough because there was a time period from 3.29 p.m. until 5.15 p.m. when nobody saw him and he did not, he had not made any phone calls from the office phone or used the office computer. So, maybe that's when he left and did it. 
seven times. 